Okay, how much can you stretch a hat, you know, a hat, uh, or a, a western hat, a straw hat, a real hat hat, how much can you stretch it? Uh, I'm going to tell you today, um, not to you know, toot my own horn, but uh, humbly speaking, I'm probably one of the better stretch guys out there. Um, I'm doing it over 25 years, and... I take the hardest cases and uh, stretch the most, and I do, you know, stretch it the neatest and uh, stretch for free. So uh, I've done hundreds and hundreds of them, maybe thousands, uh, I guess, you know. So I'm going to say I'm, I'm qualified to tell you, you know, how much can you stretch a hat? We're going to let you know, but first you got to watch me noodle around with my guitar. It's just kind of the way it goes here on uh, Kevin from JJ Hat Center. I take my glasses off, I tell you what we're going to do, I play a little, and we, uh, we talk about it. And then I play some more. So you can fast forward it past all this if you're not into the uh, guitar stuff. But uh, I'm going to tell you exactly how much you can stretch a hat today, okay? I'm going to give you a hint. You can stretch it as much as you want. You can go as far as you like. But, and there's a huge but, big, big, you've heard about big butts? This is the biggest butt of them all, okay? So, we'll finish it up right after I play a little bit, so I'll keep it short too. <laughs> stretching is yeah you could stretch as much as you want but the more you stretch the more out of shape and distorted and messed up the hat gets so yeah you can stretch from a small to extra large but there are so many side effects um, first of all when you start stretching this part bigger the felt gets bigger here but it comes from somewhere else the felt is coming from the crown the crowns getting lower and the brim is getting smaller. So the more, I, the bigger I wind up making this hole inside here, that felt is gonna start going down because the same felt is going to other places. So you start getting a lower crown, not in a good way too. It's like you don't have enough fabric to make the full shape of the crown almost. It's, it's like that. And then the brim starts getting real short too. You start losing brim. And then there's this big crease mark, so you know, if you're stretching with a hat jack, only this part stretches, so it's like a stair step. So then you have to go and kind of smooth that out. You kind of do, but there's still a big mark there, like a big crease mark. 
and then the, the brim starts doing crazy stuff. You know, when you take it off the stretcher, it's like this. So you have to completely reshape the brim. So basically, what I'm saying is you can do it. You can stretch as much as you want, but um, realistically, the only thing you can really stretch, I'm going to say, is in between a size. If you're between a 7 one eighth and a quarter, you can stretch it up to that quarter if you're in the middle. But even then, I don't like to do it. Um, I'd rather give you the quarter and just size it down. You know, that's 99.9% .9 of the times I'd rather do that. Only time you stretch it is that you have no choice. You know, it's your hat. You can't return it, exchange it. You just got to make it bigger. There are other things you can do, too, that don't make the hat, you know, all like this and stuff and like stretch marks and, you know, everything. There are other things, too. Also, the leather can break. If it's a vintage hat, it's going to be dry. It'll split, you know. When you stretch a hat, the hat never looks new anymore. So if you're stretching a new hat, it won't look new anymore. The idea is to stretch as little as possible. Even if you're stretching between a 7, 1 eighth and a quarter, you know, like a fraction of a size, you know, all these things happen. You get the stretch marks, you know, da, da, da. Um, I'm going to say you could probably do that safely. I can hide all this, you know, the um, side effects. I could put the stretch in the back and have no stretch in the front so the front looks perfect and then have the back blend, you know, that's where all the stretch is. That's by putting the heat in the back when I stretch it, it makes only the back part stretch. So we hide it, you don't see the actual stretch. Uh, if I'm using a hat jack, I hide the crease here, you know, on this line so you don't see it stair step or I use the big hat stretcher, the big steel, you know, cylinder one that looks like a hat block. Um, that's a better stretcher. But some other things you can do is you can clip the reed. Um, if you want to make your hat bigger, right here, okay, there is a reed. That's a little tube. If you cut this right in the back where the seam is, you cut only this part. Just that. Not down here. Just that little tube right there. Clip it. Clip it with like a needle nose or a scissor or whatever. The tension from this, this is like a wire, you know, the tension breaks and then you're able to stretch the hat more. So when a hat is tight, there's this tension, it's like a piece of piano wire that you're trying to force down. If you clip that, the tension's way better. So you clip it, you can pull the reed out, just pull it out, get rid of it. If you want to do a little more extreme drop, or just leave the reed in and just have it clipped so the tension's gone. The reed keeps a nice overly shape. It gives your hat structure, it gives a circular shape, always bounces back to a circle, you know. So it's good to have the reed in there, but, you know, if it's a hat that you want to get floppier and more out of shape and softer and everything, you can just get, get it out, pull the reed out, you know. But that's one thing you could do. If your hat is severely, severely tight and you just don't want to all these side effects, you don't want the outside to change, this is a very extreme thing to do, but you can just take the leather sweatband out, just get it out. Uh, I've just taken razor blade, like right in here, you just cut those stitches very carefully, just cut them, go around, pull the whole band out. If you take the leather band out, yeah, it's going to be raw, you know, raw felt inside, but your hat will get way bigger and the shape and the integrity of it doesn't change. Now, if you're a bald guy, you don't have a lot of hair, it's possible you're going to sweat through that easy without a sweatband. So, yeah, if you're going to pull the sweatband out, replace it with a ribbon sweatband. Have a hat maker put a ribbon sweatband in, which will give you almost no difference in size. Um, it's very, very thin, much better than having a leather. Or just put in a stick and sweatband, a cap band new. We call them sweatbands on our website. Um, they might be sold out this time of year, but uh, they come in every like three weeks or so. Cap Band New, we call it sweatband. It's a, uh, a cotton sweatband that you just stick in the front. You could even cut it in half instead of being that long, make it this long. So your forehead is against a cotton absorbing surface and there's no sweatband anywhere else. So you just gain like two sizes on your head. So let's say you're a size eight and a Stetson only comes up to a seven and three quarters. You could take the sweatband, the entire leather band out, and you've got yourself, you know, a hat that's two sizes bigger now. That's a, uh, like I said, it's invasive and it's extreme, but me, as a guy who stretches like for a living, I'd rather do that than actually stretch a hat more than a little size. If you stretch it a half size, 
you'll get some side effects, but I'll be able to get rid of them. Um, if you stretch it an entire size, like a 7 to a 7 one eighth, there's going to be some extreme side effects there. You know, there'll be like, you know, crease marks and basically I'm going to have to reshape the entire crown. I'm going to have to round it out again and the entire brim will be like this. I'm going to have to flatten it and reflange it. So, you know, and we do, I do that stuff for free. So it's almost like I destroy your the shape of your hat and then I totally remanufacture it at the end because the stretch was that brutal, you know. So yeah, you can stretch a half size, a whole size, two sizes, three sizes, four sizes. The more you go, the worse the hat starts to look. And you have to be cool with that. Um, you know, some people they're just going to say, well, at least I'll be able to wear it, you know, uh, before I couldn't even wear it. So. I guess I have no choice, so go ahead with the stretch. And I tell them, you know, the stretch is going to mess up the hat a lot. There's going to be a lot of crease marks. The hat's not going to look new anymore. Are you sure you want to do it? And um, that's the big disclaimer. So um, if you have absolutely no choice, you can't uh, return it. You can't exchange it. You can't give it away to a friend or uh, whatever. You're like, okay, I can't do anything with this hat, but... Uh, I want to be able to wear it. So, okay, you know, then I could stretch it and do all you want. And, you know, you know, the hat is going to look a little bit messed up at the end, you know. But, um, I don't know, let's say, yeah, here we go, this is how it looks. But, yeah, you get to wear the hat, you know, you'll have a lower crown, a smaller brim. Uh, you might have some, you know, weirdness on the inside. Sometimes what happens is you have to stretch so much that the sweatband has to pop. And then there's the sweatband opens up this much from sweat from stretching, so I have to take a little spare piece of leather and put it in that gap. So in other words, it pops, this seam opens up, and then it starts separating. And it's like that far because we we went like you know a really huge amount with the stretch. So then I have to get like a little piece of you know, sweatband or felt or leather or whatever I have and patch that in for them and stuff, you know, a hot glue it in or something. And, you know, it's no big deal, but like, you know, you, it's really invasive, you know, it's brutalizing the hat and it's something that I don't like to do to hats. So, yeah, you, you can stretch almost infinitely. Um, you can go from a small to an extra large, all kinds of stuff, but stuff like that, it will it'll just look so horrible. You'll have no crown room, it's no depth. I'm going to say, stretching a half a size from like, you know, in between an eighth and a quarter up to a quarter, that's like a fraction of a size, you can do it, you can do it cleanly. I'm going to say most people have trouble with it. They stretch it, it feels fine, and the next day it contracts. What I do is instead of stretching it like 20%, I stretch it 20, 40, 60 till it's like to the point where like everything looks like it's about to pop. I look at these stitches here because this gets so tight that it's like, you know, almost at the point where it's about to break these stitches because they like, they bend kind of like that when it's under pressure. And when it looks like it's stretched so much, it's about to pop, then I stop, you know? So I really take your head as far as possible. Then when you put it back on, it's too big. The person panics and they're like, you sure? Yeah. And 15 minutes later or whatever, 10 minutes later, it's contracting, contracting, contracting. And they put it on and it feels almost like before, like just about when they walked in after that brutal stretch. And they're like, I kind of feel a little different. Can you do more? So that's an idea of like how stretching works. If I need to stretch like 10%, I gotta go 10, 20, 30, 40, 50s, you know, just go as far as I can, way, way past my target point. And then after everything contracts, shrinks back, shrinks back, then you're left with just a tiny bit of stretch. You might wind up with like three to 5% after doing it 50%. And then you can repeat it and you'll get another 5%. It just doesn't work. It's a trick. It's a scam. It's like uh, stretching shoes. You, you take it off the stretcher, you put it on their head, it feels great. Okay, anything else, sir? You put it in the box and then you say bye. You know, stretches don't last. The next day they go back. Believe me, I was a sneaker salesman selling, you know, Nikes and Adidas and 
really high end, high, high level, high end sales. Back in you know the days like the 80s and the 90s, like when sneakers were huge, uh, I was doing that for a while. We were selling the, the amount of volume we were selling with these like you know $200 sneakers, Jordans and things like that. It was insane. You know? Just stacks, aisles and aisles. Of, we sold so many. People would line up at the register all day long. And there were a lot of opportunities for me to kind of scan people. Like if I didn't have their size, if it was a little bit big, you could tie the shoe laces a little tighter, like really tight, so it almost feels too small. And then they put on this half size too big that's really tight with the shoe lace. This is too tight. No, it's not too tight, man. You open it up and they try it. They're like, oh wow, yeah. and it's actually too big. These are all like these salesman tricks and stuff. Like, uh, you know. If the, if the shoes are too tight, you open the laces completely and stuff. Um, you know, there's all kinds of ways that you could just sort of make things kind of work. But, um, I really went off on a big tangent there, didn't I? Anyway, I almost forgot what I was talking about. That was funny. Yeah, I used to sell a lot of sneakers back in the days. That was my job before JJ Hats and stuff. And, um... Yeah, there's a lot of salesman tricks, and stretching is one of them, and that's an old shoe salesman trick. Um, you know, like the old timers, the old old dudes who work at those old time shoe shops, you know, with the, the measures and stuff and the little stools. That's an old thing. You tighten the laces a lot, where you put in an extra inner sole, and that tightens it, you know. There's, there's all these little trick scams. Stretching is a scam. I don't like doing it. Um, I never like doing it. It's brutal. The only time I like doing it is if I know somebody's got to do it and I know I can do it right. You know, I could do it so it'll actually work. And by the time, you know, it's stretched, the head's so destroyed, I have to put it back together again and reshape it. And I know I'm really good at that, you know, flattening this out, putting a curve back. So it's like this whole job, you know, cleaning it and you know, scraping the grime off and then, you know, stretching it and then the leather breaks and you have to put a piece of leather in there and then you, you know, put the hat all back together, you reshape it and all that is for free, you know. That's a stretch. It's a big job. It doesn't work that well. It brutalizes the hat. It looks horrible when it's done. So I'm going to say, yeah, you can stretch as much as you want, but really less less than one size is going to be doable. And I'm even saying doable by me. Other people it's tough because they'll stretch it as far as they feel that it's safe without hurting the hat or making the hat break or pop. And I'm willing to go like, you know, four or five times past that because I'm just, I know how to do it. You know, you, you steam it back here and what that does, it softens up the seam the inside seam with the leather it makes it more elastic. So you steam it back here so you don't burn the leather. It makes it softer and you crank a little. Then you steam back there, crank it more. And as you crank it, you crank it till it feels like it's stopping. Then you hit it with the steam. When you hit it, you hear it actually creaking like a You can hear it actually stretching. Just the heat alone. Under the tension, you get that tension stops you can't crank it anymore then you hit it here on that seam and you can actually hear the seam making it stretch it, it creaks up. it opens up and I could hear that you know when it gets to a point where it's not creaking anymore and it's not moving I know I've you know taken all the elasticity out of that leather and that's not going to go any further um, I also look at this point here I don't want this to stretch so much where I'm gonna have to start sewing on a band again for somebody um, you know it's a real old crappy hat I might just hot glue the band down but if it's something you know decent I'm gonna have to sew it tax and it's a lot of work you know especially for a free steaming and a free stretch you know um, basically they're to sell hats not to you know steam them it's just like a courtesy we do but people you know they come in some some guys come in every couple of years with a shopping bag of hats like you know a couple of old couples and they tip me nicely and stuff you know but um, it's a lot of work sometimes, and um, it's something we've always done free. You know, some people just bring in one hat, other people bring in a whole bunch of them. Um, some people are very, very picky, you know, and it's a, it's a free job, and 
they're telling you how to shape it and they're kind of riding you for an hour and stuff and it's it can be kind of a nerve-wracking thing too you know especially when you know that the hat is might break and you tell the person that and they're over there hovering you know waiting for it to break you could tell they're worried you're like oh the guy should not have you know done this and i could tell but uh stretching is bad don't stretch go bigger don't tell the guy, can you stretch this a little bit? I'm hitting the head, you know. No, don't do that. Just don't do it. It's bad. Um, there's no ifs about it. It's not like, is it kind of bad? Just don't do it. If you're between sizes, go bigger and pat it down. Patting it down under here is not invasive. It's, you forget it's there. It's a little flat pad that brings it in, and that's how you fine tune a hat. If your size is going to wane a little because my hair gets really big, occasionally it gets really tight, like this one, I mean, it gets looser when I get a haircut and stuff, my hat size changes. Um, I'm not going to go out and buy new hats. What I'm going to do is buy the hat on the bigger side and pad it down. Pad it down, cut the padding down, add more padding, this and that. It's very easy to do. It's a sticker. It's basically a cotton pillow that looks like a sweatband, like a little belt with like cotton pillowy, you know, stuffed kind of a pillow on it. It's cotton, and one side's adhesive, like a sticker, with a, you know, a little strip you peel off to activate it. And it's really strong. It's that kind of like really strong, strong adhesive that like once it's on, you know, that's it. Um, you can get it off, and let's say you, the very first time you put it on, you put it on a little crooked. It, get it off cleanly and try again. But once it's on there for a while, you know, a few days, a few weeks, you can't get it off without making some residue under theirs. So they, but it doesn't matter, because once it's on there, you always want to change it anyway. Once I get a sweat wick here in the front, it's getting a little funky, sweaty after a few months, I pull it out, I slap a new one right in its place. There's not going to ever come a point where I want to take that off. Um, your hat's just going to get all sweaty. You know, you put it in when you're ready for it. I'll, I'll put it in when my hat's just showing the tiniest bit of sweat, like peeking through onto them. I'm like, okay, it's time to put a sweat wick in. I put the pad in, you know, in the front for sweat protection. Now, the sweat wicks work two different ways. You can put it in the front to protect your hat from getting sweaty. That way it's between you and the hat and the sweat never reaches the hat. Or you could put it in the back just for sizing to tighten up the hat and put it under the leather so you don't feel it at all under the leather in the back. And that is tightening up your hat to fine tune it but you're not taking advantage of that padding in the front which is um, absorbing sweat. Now why would you not want it up there? Most people would think oh it sounds like you should always put it in the front. It's good to block sweat. Well, it is, but it's uncomfortable. The idea is that leather, leather is very dry and sanitary. When it gets sweaty, you take a cloth, you wipe it down, you're fine, you know, a bandana. Once a sweat wick, when those pads get wet, they stay wet, they're absorbent. So you go to a cafe, you're cooling off, you take your hat off, it's summertime, the air's on. Nice and cool and refreshed. You have a nice cold iced tea. When you put your hat back on, you're ready to go out in the hot weather. Your hat is wet still and it's cold from the air conditioner. And you put it on, it's like wet and sweaty and it's not sanitary. You can't wipe it anymore. So all you can do is rip that off and change it to a fresh one, which you're not going to do every time you have lunch. So, yeah, you know, you let it dry in the air and then, you know, you change it eventually. You change it however many times you can afford, twice a summer, five times a summer, ten times a summer. Um, you buy a case of them, it's a little cheaper. If you don't buy a case, they're like five bucks each or something. Um, I'm going to say sweat wicks are really good, but I don't like them at the beginning of a hat's career. I use it when a hat needs it, in the front that is. Now a sweat wick is good to size you in the back, but you don't need a sweat wick to size under the back. You could just, just use foam. We use something called weather stripping. You could buy something called polyfoam weather seal. It's weather stripping, which is way cheaper than the sweat wick because it's not cotton, it's just foam. So that you could use under the leather, but the, uh, the sweat pads you could use against your skin in the front because they're cotton. You know, I'm saying all well, hyperallergenic, hypoallergenic, you know. So you need um, you need that for you know sweat protection in the front. If you're just tightening up a hat, you don't need a sweat pad. 
you could just use weather stripping. A sweat pad is a little smoother and thinner. Um, you know, it's a little less lumpy, but it's, it's more expensive. You can get a whole roll of weather stripping that'll last your lifetime for three or four dollars. So I use three eighth of an inch width polyfoam weather seal. Doesn't matter what type, as long as it's adhesive weather seal, weather stripping. Uh, three eighths of an inch is a good width, and yeah, get a roll of that to tighten up your hats in the back. Always go big, just don't go small, guys. Stretching is the worst. I don't want you to stretch hats. How much can you stretch a hat? Um, cloth hats like a, a cap, you know, like a linen cap or a wool cap, they're different. They don't contract. Once you stretch that, like a, a newsboy cap, you could stretch it even over your knee sometimes. Once you stretch it, it stays. So you have to be more careful and stretch softer and less because it, you're not stretching 60% to go down to like 5 or 10%. You just stretch it, you know, true to size. They don't contract, but leather sweatbands do contract. So it stays stretched for a few minutes and it just comes back. You gotta severely overstretch them to get that little five or ten percent stretch. Um, a western hat is going to take more because it's thicker, it's harder, there's less flex. It's very, very hard leather sweatband inside. So yeah, that's gonna take more stretching, more force and stuff. And a thinner hat, you know, with a really soft leather band or like a, a hat with a ribbon band is not going to take much to stretch at all. So you have to also gauge it by the feel of the hat and stuff. Um, it's not something I suggest doing yourself. You know, if you're going to stretch yourself, you should only stretch a little bit, like, you know, between sizes. Never stretch over an entire size because the side effects will be so bad. You're going to have to have all the equipment there to just put that hat back together again, you know. There's, especially with a, with a hat jack. A hat jack is only stretching one little bit, you know, just there. It's not stretching the whole crown of the hat and stuff, just the part where the sweatband is. So, yeah, yeah, don't stretch. Guys, buy your hats big. Buy them on the bigger side if you're in doubt and, and just tighten it up. Um, everything you buy through mail order is refundable. Not just exchangeable, it's refundable. That's federal law. So despite the store's policy, if they say no refunds, only exchanges with a receipt or store credit, bull. It doesn't apply to mail order, only walk-ins. So mail order, everything just gets you know overridden. Now they can kind of get around that by giving you a restocking fee. They could say, oh yeah, refund, uh, that's cool, but you get a 99% uh, a restocking fee, or whatever. You, know, you get a small restocking fee, so you got to pay to get a refund, kind of, which is ridiculous. So um, I don't like that policy. I don't trust that policy. Um, I say beware. But yeah, anything you buy, the store policy says no, no refunds. By mail, it is refundable. And you can ask them first. Um, if you don't like the size you get, return it, exchange it for a bigger size, pad it down a little, ask for some free padding, or get what I said, cap ban new. C-A-P-B-A-N-N-U. We'll go on JJ's website. Uh, it's called Sweatband for $5. We'll go on Amazon, look for cap band new. Those are the cotton ones which work as sweat protectors and for tightening hats. A little more expensive, but they're you know they're cotton, they're luxurious, and they, they're really you know smooth and flat. Or just get some weather stripping, some 3 8 inch weather stripping, uh, adhesive back type, and use that in the back for padding. Um, it's very cheap, it's easy to get, it's about three bucks for a lifetime supply. Um, and that's it. Go bigger. Stretching sucks. Don't stretch your hats. If you want to know how much I could stretch, I'm going to say we can stretch a half of a one size pretty cleanly. Um, an entire size, you can do it, but it's not going to be clean. Because to get that size, you got to go like two, three sizes and then let it shrink back. So it's so brutal. Um, I don't want you guys to do that to your hats. And if you think that you, know, you have a hat that's just one size off, can Kev fix it? There are other options. Cut the reed inside, you know? Cut that little reed. Cut it, and then just pull it over your knee, you know? Just take it over your knee and just 
kill that bitch, you know? Just pull it. Lengthwise. Yeah. If you're Asian, you might need more rounds. As European and African dudes, we all have a little bit more oval. But uh, working next to Koreatown, I found a lot of Asian folks, and my wife, who's Japanese, has a little more roundish. But uh, for the most part, if you're stretching, stretch lengthwise like that, pull it out, get that reed out first. Don't do all that pro stretching with the hat jack and everything. Then that's enough. Pull the reed out. That's not enough for you. Actually, you don't have to pull the reed out. Just clip the reed. Clip it. That's not enough for you. Pull the whole reed out. If that's not enough for you, you can pull the whole sweat back out. That's easy to do. There those stitches there. You could just cut those with a you know a razor blade. Once you start it, it's easy to just pull out, pull, and then just cut at the very end. Your hat will grow enormous, so you're going to gain a lot that way. So if you have a hat that's very small, that will give you like maybe a whole size or two sizes bigger or something. Um, it's a good trick. I've done this other weird thing where I leave the front of the sweatbands here. I just leave that, so I've got a nice leather, you know, sweatbands who keep sweat from permeating through, a nice dry uh, surface, and I've taken the other 70% out of it and removed it. I've clipped it and just left the front. One of my hats is like that. Um, the pink one, the hot pink one, it was too, it was tight, and I didn't want to stretch it. I hate stretching a, a new hat. You just, you just ruin it. It just doesn't look good. Um, so I pulled the sweatband out and I left a little bit and it stays, you know, and that's in there. I think it's cool, it's different. And I have so much hair back here, I really don't need sweat protection back there. Just by the forehead, that's the only place I would ever really sweat up the hat. So that's another way of loosening up the hat. Yeah? Okay. Thank you. 